So we are living in a fascinating era of artificial intelligence. When these technologies are becoming ubiquitous in our lives, we should ask some serious questions. Beyond just pattern recognitions, these technologies fail to be empathetic towards human beings. They don't understand what it means to be fair, and they have no notion of equality. So people raise so many questions about ethics of artificial intelligence. In MIT Media Lab, my work revolves around how can we envision future that machines and humans can work together. They can trust each other. But then what do we mean by trust? In what we trust? We can't even trust our social organizations, our markets. I want to take you to the three amazing places in the world. First, we go to Western Ghats of India. It is one of the most biodiverse places on the planet Earth. On the west side of it, you see Arabian Sea. And as these monsoon clouds gather, farmers in India start preparing their land. This is just a small land. It's one hectare of land that these farmers have. But the amount of time and efforts they spend just preparing this land is enormous. Their battle is not just with the nature and waiting for water. The battle starts now. When they take their 500 kilograms or 600 kilograms rice to the market. But these markets are composed with a lot of people who have self-interests. Some of these people have more information than others. It's called information asymmetry in economics. What that does to these markets? People who have more information can manipulate people who have no information or less information. And farmers are one of those people who have less resources to kind of interpret and predict how markets will move. By the time their goods reach to consumer, their profit is one penny, or less than one penny. So their future, the hard work they have put together to educate their kids or to have better life goes to pennies. Last 20 years, there are around 300,000 farmer suicides in India. This number is shocking. And why it happens? It's just because unreliable reputation, where farmers cannot trust any other in the market, and inequality that this market causes. Second, I'm going to take you to the, one of the most beautiful cities in the world, New York City, Wall Street. On Wall Street, people wake up every day, and they're super smart engineers, mathematicians, physicists, or business people. Their goal is, as the sun rises, they hope that market will rise, prices will go up. And eventually, they will have algorithms and systems that nobody can imagine will beat the market. These technologies are so complex that no human being can imagine how fast the trades are happening and what's their impact on our society. I want to show you what happened on May 6th, 2010, afternoon time, 2.47 PM. Accenture stock was trading at 40. In a minute, stock price went to a penny. And everybody started wondering what's going on. There is huge turbulence in the market, and people cannot make sense of what's happening. Dow dropped to highest 9.2% that intraday swing that market has seen. This is the second highest intraday swing in the history of Wall Street. What's happening? In 36 minutes, we lost not 1,000, not million, but $1 trillion of wealth. And we still don't know how and why this happened. So we are building these complex systems and markets and organizations, and we are putting our dreams and 401ks and all the efforts that we put in our life into savings, and the value of those savings is one penny in the end. So we are fooled by this randomness that this nature and the world present to us, and we still don't know how to deal with it. You can say, well, on Wall Street, we have reputation, we have credit agencies. However, credit agencies fail because we've seen in 2000 crashes that 
a lot of credit ratings were manipulated. So who do you trust? The third place I want to take you to the amazing hyper-connected world that we live in, the internet. On internet, as social interactions are growing, there is unprecedented growth among the data that we have. And this data has enabled the new kind of economies called sharing markets or gig economics. For example, Airbnb, Uber, Mechanical Turk, or TaskRabbit, where you can hire people in an instant rate, or you can work for somebody if you have access to internet. So the goal is somebody who has some need. In Uber, you want to go from one place to other place. That's your need. So you're putting a request for Uber. And somebody who has resources, it's either his time or some sort of bungalow or a flat or a car that he can rent you. Or on Mechanical Turk, for example, if I'm training artificial intelligence algorithm, I can put my data in the real world and ask people to label it so that I can train my machine learning algorithm and make, make better in inferences on, on the data. Now, this is super appealing because it's so easy for people who don't have jobs to get on these markets. This is one of the examples from Being a Turker paper written by David Martin. It's the most amazing paper I ever read on these gig economies. It says, I'm having a hard time, and especially financially. Roommates running out of the money, but only thing I can do to pay my bills is get on internet and start turking. Turking means go on Mechanical Turk and start answering these questions that requesters are posting to workers. Now, there's a huge inequality in, in these markets because think about it. You're working with strangers. You're hiring a stranger or you're working for a stranger. And sometimes people get experiences with it that their work get rejected. For example, on Mechanical Turk, if you are a requester, you hold the power to accept or reject the data that somebody has produced. So worker can spend hours working on and creating the data sets, but requester in a minute can reject that data without paying a single penny to the worker. So this is one of the quote from requester to worker. It says, you received a bonus from some company for work related to something, and the value of your bonus is one cent. Now, this is shame because bonus earned is one, one, one penny. Again, same problems, inequality and broken reputation leads to the breakdown in trust, and we see internet markets are failing. So if we go back to the farmer in India, or people who are invested money on Wall Street, or people who are finding new work on internet, there is one thing common. These all markets are leading to markets for layman's, where value of goods, it's very hard to judge. So I believe that every person on Earth should get equal playing field in the market. It's people's fundamental right. Whether you are in India as a farmer or in the America investing your money on Wall Street, or a person on internet. And the only way that can happen is we rethink about trust. We can think about trust and reputation as a backbone of these economies. But what it means, can we trust reputation itself? Can we trust credit agencies? Can we trust five-star ratings that we see all around us? This was an Uber I took from the school across MIT. And it asked me, please rate. There is another economy based on that that creates these sample boards that passenger can see. And it shows you five star. Now the problem with this is that most of the time, people rate in 4.75 to five not below. How often you have given negative rating to an Uber driver, or how often you have rated a driver? Very few times. And research shows that around 80% times, people vote at the higher end. And why that happens? It's more because people don't care about voting, 
and they don't have incentives to vote until they had a bad experience. Or in the marketplaces like Mechanical Turk, where you have workers and requesters, giving public feedback kind of seen as a problematic thing. A worker, if he says this requester is bad, and if it goes on internet, then he may not get work again. And similarly, if requester, he gives bad feedback to a worker, that worker can send him thousands of emails complaining about that, and the requester will end up spending huge amount of time rather than doing his business. So this is a problem when incentives are misaligned. So most of the scores lead to 4.75 out of 5, and it's known as reputation inflation. And how do we solve that? So I talked about problems, but at MIT, we don't talk about problems. You solve the problems. And to solve this problem, I laid the invention of incentive-compatible reputation system. And the idea is, let's say you are a worker on Mechanical Turk or any of the sharing economy. This mechanism rethinks about how reputation should work. So workers' incentives are get good work, get paid well, and get respectable communication from the requesters. Bob, a worker, interacts with 15 people, 15 requesters. Now, if he lie in his ratings, the person's score that he's rating high goes up on his task feed. So if he rates Alice as a top requester, then next Alice's tasks are available to the Bob, and other requester's tasks go at the bottom. So in this way, if Bob lies, he's inviting work from somebody that he doesn't like, or somebody that he will not pay him. On the other hand, if you're a requester posting work to, to the workers, your in incentive is get high quality work done in a quick amount of time. But if you lie in your rating, you may invite workers who you don't like, or they are not high quality. So the way tasks are released, the access to the task from Alice is given to people who Alice likes first. And then other people get the access later on. So in this bi-directional system, what's happening is both workers and requesters have no incentive to lie, because if they lie, their future is super uncertain. But if they tell the truth, then they can make money or they can get their businesses done. So this is called as strategy-proof mechanisms, but in a new angle that is encouraging pro-social behavior in these marketplaces. Now, when I think about artificial intelligence and future of work or future of market, there are these three things are super important, empathy, fairness, and equality. And when we are thinking about trust across this dimension, we need to ask a question that can we design human-centered markets that can revolutionize our future, that future deserves more than pennies and creates equal field in the marketplaces for every human being? Thank you.